Let's talk about Honkai Star Rail. This is the new Mahoyo game. It's a JRPG. It's free to play. It's a gacha game. So obviously, if you don't like gacha games, this won't be for you. If you didn't like Genshin Impact, this won't be for you. But I will say, so far, I'm enjoying myself. I do have some pretty big concerns about the combat. I do think that eventually it will get stale. But I will say that the writing is fun. This is a very humorous game. <laughs> There's a lot of little... <laughs> I want to say Easter eggs in which you kind of go into these text adventures pretty much mid, you know, mid inspection of an item. And it can be really fun, really humorous. And one of the things I love about this game that I, I feel like a lot of people are probably going to enjoy is that you can pick the most smart ass answer and characters will respond to you and they will absolutely give you shit for it. And it's one of the things I love about this game. It really kept me going. I didn't feel like the game got too stagnant because you do have time to explore and get to talk to a lot of individuals and run through different side quests. And it is just one of those games where I feel it's like light and breezy, and really fun. And I love encountering new characters and talking to them and just giving them shit because I just like seeing their response. It feels just like a game that Mohoyo nailed in terms of its tone. And I think that's really appreciative. It's honestly it's what's kept me going the entire time. I really want to see where the story goes. I think it's pretty interesting so far. But like I said, the combat, it's going to be iffy. So let's dive right in. If I had to describe combat in Honkai, I'm probably going to go with strategic aggression. So here's the deal. Your party is going to have an elemental attribute. They call it a path. For example, the main character, their path is destruction pretty much a brute force when you fight enemies when you approach them you're going to see them have icons above their heads can identify their weakness so you can strategize before you ever engage into a fight what party members you should bring in to maximize your capabilities now let me kind of throw this out there that is completely fine however in the beginning of this game you are introduced to a character named march and she's pretty much the only character that i've ran into so far who has any type of defensive capabilities. She's the only person that can shield other characters in this game. You cannot heal. <laughs> you really can't. In the first eight hours, I did not find one ability that would help me heal. You cannot heal during combat, which I find to be very strange. Now, because I thought March was really a support character, maybe she'll have like a healing ability, but not really. Pretty much what her defensive ability does is that it casts a pre- nice shield on characters it will help save you early on and with that shield on anytime that character is attacked she will follow up that's cool great but the fact that you cannot heal in this game is going to make a lot of people uncomfortable because you have to strategize before combat before you enter in now it's almost impossible to do when you start to fight bosses because their elemental attributes are unknown you don't really get to walk up to them and just start the fight <laughs> so you need to be careful when you begin. You need to be have a pretty balanced team from the start, and you need to continuously level them up because the experience points you get normally is not much. But because of all the various reward systems in this game, you're going to be able to be pretty decent, I would say, in terms of leveling. You are going to have to get kind of creative with converting certain resources to ensure that you have the ability to purchase uh, certain experience boosters. Because if you don't, you're more than likely going to struggle. I would say in the first eight hours, I found myself under leveled, especially when I was trying to keep my party at least at a, you know, at, <laughs> at a slight disadvantage. I would say I was like three to four levels under most fights. But the game allows you to walk up to enemies and attack them beforehand so that you're able to weaken them and they'll give you a slight advantage. But if you start to fight multiple enemies in a row, that advantage doesn't even matter anymore. You're pretty much going to have to be quick on your feet and it's cool. I think it's fine for right now. I haven't really gotten bored with it. I will say though, as much as I love the animation in this game, I can tell you that watching the same ultimate over and over again, for eight hours it can be kind of mind-numbing i'm just like let me skip it the other weird thing is 
<laughs> is that you're going to notice that when you're in combat in the top right, you're going to see icons that will allow you to speed up combat times two and then auto battle. You're not going to be able to activate that, I think, until you beat the first boss. And then you're going to want to auto battle sometimes. You can't auto battle bosses, and that's great because you really need to strategize when you fight some of these bosses. If you try to auto battle in certain areas, you'll probably get killed, especially enemies who are higher than you. You'll have an indicator above them, though it'll, it'll go from white to red, and you'll know almost immediately that you probably couldn't mess with them. But it is, it is really recommended that before you go into combat, before you engage in any enemy, that you have a, you know, a pretty diverse party that's going to allow you to break the enemy very quickly because you will do, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say you won't do a lot of damage, but you'll do minimal damage. Outside of your normal level, you're going to have to pay attention to your light cone, which is a card that's going to buff certain attributes and grant a passive ability to your character based off their path. It is recommended you level that up as often as possible because it is going to help you in combat. Now, you're not going to necessarily have to worry about the traces that's the skill tree until around level 20 until you ascend because once you ascend for the first time at level 20 you're going to see that i want to say three skill trees will pop and once you level those up you're going to see a nice little boost for your character in terms of certain abilities and attacks and defense and stuff like that it's really nice the other thing you're going to see is what's called the eidolons so as you play the gacha game and you will get free passes from time to time. You might get them a lot, actually. You might happen to pull a certain character. And that character is right in your party. And you will get the Eidolon for that character. And you can unlock a pretty nice buff for your character. I think with Dan Hang, I think I have his level 2, which is really nice. Because it really helps him in terms of his wind attack. And it really makes him capable in combat. He does a ton of damage now, which is great. But you're going to have to pay attention early on to your level, the light comb, traces, and Eidolons. Eventually, and I want to say it's pretty much on the, the next planet you go to. So you're about five hours in. You're going to unlock relics. And these relics are equipment. That's it. Yeah. And these equipment are assigned a, you know, a certain rarity level. And you can go ahead and buff those as well. You're going to get those. Once you unlock those, you will get them almost in every chest. So do not worry if early on, like you're like certain characters just don't have equipment on them. It's not, you know, they're getting massacred in combat for whatever reason. They're just taking all this damage. Don't worry. Every chest you go and touch and every mission you go on will more than likely grant you a new relic. So don't worry. You're going to be geared up pretty quickly. Now, I mentioned earlier that my only real concern about this game would be the combat and whether or not it's going to stagnate. And I think that Mahoyo is going to have enough time to, you know, maybe introduce new ultimates, that type of stuff. But I am going to say this. The only thing that I absolutely dislike about this game is the level gating. And it's kind of how consistent it was. Now, the first time you level gate me in any game, I can forgive you. Maybe I do need to stop, slow down, Take a look at some of the side quests. Do a couple things here and there. Completely cool with that. But if you're going to level gate me three levels after, I'm going to be pretty upset with you. And that's essentially what happens in Honkai. The first level gate is level 14. And then shortly after that, it's level 17. And just like Genshin, your world level is pretty much you increase it by just doing stuff in the story. Doing side quests. But here's the thing. In an open world game, I have the flexibility and freedom to go wherever I want. That's completely fine. If you want to level gate me from like completing certain main mission stuff, absolutely. But in a JRPG, especially when the story's picking up, and especially when the level design is so linear, that's frustrating. Because there are certain places in this game I don't just I just don't want to return to. Okay? And I think that it's an odd design choice to have the level gates so close together. When momentum was starting to pick up, when the beats were starting to get good, when the writing was starting to get good, I was like, come on, like you don't have to do us like that. You could have just waited a little bit, right? But there is level gating in this game, and I feel like 
because it's such a momentum killer, <laughs> literally three levels after, it, it's going to frustrate a lot of people. And don't get me wrong, there are some side quests that are worth doing, absolutely. But it's an odd design choice, especially in this day and age, to pretty much pause your progress so that you can take a look around when there's really, at the beginning of the game, not much to look at. Alrighty, level gating stuff aside, let's move on to some of the more positive things. And if you happen to end the video here, please subscribe. <laughs> Just a reminder. Um, one of the things I absolutely love about Mahoyo is that while they incentivize you to spend your money, right? Because it is a gotcha game. They do such a great job of having all of these different paths to for the player to ensure that you don't have to spend money to potentially grab the character you want to grab. I love that. I think that's fantastic. I ended up pulling a five-star character on random. Didn't pay a damn thing for it. I really love using him in combat. He's incredibly OP. <laughs> Just putting that out there. But I love the fact that there are so many different menus and so many different paths to help you get resources to get star passes it just really helps you out and the fact that you don't have to spend a dime to do it is completely fine you just have to be kind of crafty and creative as you're picking up certain passes and as you are breaking down these resources to for me especially i was just going into the store with the resources that i had and just buying experience boosters because I wanted to ensure that my characters were at least competent in combat and not getting their ass beat all the time. <laughs> and I don't really think that Honkai Star Rail is a hard game, but I will say when they start to get these enemies leveled up, you are taking a lot of damage and is very noticeable very quickly. But I do enjoy the fact that you have so many different avenues to ensure that you get those resources. I think the best thing that they introduced in this game, though, in my opinion, you meet Herta early on and she's this genius and she creates what's called a simulated world. And these simulated worlds are roguelike dungeons and they are fantastic. If you've ever played a roguelike before, you know the deal. Pretty much you're just rolling into these dungeons and in Honkai, it's not procedurally generated. Every area is really the same. You're going to fight enemies. You're going to get buffs from these enemies. And then you're going to be able to use currency to enhance those buffs. And I loved it. Mainly because the writing is so funny. Because eventually when you first start out, you go into like these text-based like adventures. And Herda's just trying to like troubleshoot this game. And you are, you know, the guinea pig. She's like, I wonder why this didn't work. And you can just shit talk her the entire time. And it gets even funnier when you go through the first simulated world. And you meet a certain character... And they're like, there's a random programmer who's trying to create this fun thing and you can completely trash it. You'll feel bad because the writing is really good. And he's like, look, man, I'm sorry that this is so monotonous. I can fix this. And you're like, nah, it's fine, man. It's fine. Just give me the buff. You know, give me more than one. You can try and negotiate and be a smart ass more than one. You'll never get more than one, but it's really funny. But eventually it just leads to the end when you fight a boss. Now, the first simulated world, it's recommended. I want to say you're, you're probably level 18 because if you happen to go into that fight, and you are level 16 or lower, you're more than likely going to die. I recommend that you fight the two bosses in the simulated world, at least with the relics available to you. So you're going to have to progress just a little bit on the first world, because if you don't, and you kind of roll in thinking that, you know, listen, I have a pretty balanced team, you might get worked over really quickly. I want to say that with Honkai, it kind of fools you a little bit, because you think that the combat is really simple, and it is, until enemies start doing a lot more damage than you, then you start to realize just how quickly you need to be on top of your game. Because if you're not, like I said, you're going to die. And I remember fighting the two bosses at the end of these first simulated world and just getting worked and then reminding myself, all right, so this is the part where you get punished because you can't just breeze right through it. So just make sure that you're properly leveled before you fight those bosses otherwise you're going to be pretty frustrated i will say that even with that reality check in the simulated world yeah it didn't deter me from loving that because of the writing it's it's so good i swear the, the some of the conversations you have in this game i don't know who the writers are but 
Mahoyo, give them a raise. They nailed it. There are certain things that just really make me laugh out loud when I was reading. I was like, dude, why is he such a smart ass? And how does he, you know, just annoy these characters? Why do they put up with him? Because they'll even ask themselves that, by the way. Some of your party members will be like, why are you like this? Like, what is wrong with you? Can you get your own thought because you're trying to be, <laughs> you're trying to imitate somebody? It's great. Um, you also get a phone and you're able to message or receive messages from certain characters. And it's really funny because even then you can be a smart ass to certain people. You'll have a part where, you know, this guy's like, hey, I really need your help with this. And he's like, what do I have to do? And then Herder will interrupt and be like, well, I'm having them look for this and that. And you're like, well, that's not my problem. Good luck. <laughs> like, that's just the end of the conversation. I love that. That is fantastic. I don't think I need to talk about the visuals for this game, right? I mean, it looks fantastic. It's very crisp, very colorful. Uh, in the same vein that Genshin was, very beautiful. I think the character designs are fantastic. They're very detailed. They're colorful. And uh, I'm fairly certain that there's going to be waifu wars. I'm going to see tier lists everywhere soon. It's not going to be surprising in the, in the slightest. Listen, they got some thickies in here. <laughs> I'm just calling it like I said. They got some thickums in this game. <laughs> and you're going to notice very quickly. <laughs> I will say, though, that... I still wish there was a little bit of customization for the main character. I like his design. He looks very similar to the character in Genshin Impact, a little bit more adult in tone. But I wish that there was a little bit more customization. Like, I really wish that some of the relics would change the way you look. But that's fine. That's just a small gripe. All right, wrapping up. I think that so far my impressions of Honkai are pretty positive outside of the level gating and then concerns over the, the combat. I am... I am wondering just how frequent the level gating is going to be. Maybe these two that I've run into so far, maybe after that it'll sparse itself out. I don't know. I'm hoping that it's a little less frequent because I do want to be able to play the game and progress the story without so much restrictions. I hope they do not introduce any type of pay to progress feature because that would just be intensely frustrating. I do hope that the pauses do diminish over time. And if you do introduce side content, it is relevant to the main plot because I think that would be acceptable, but I would still be pretty upset at the fact that I am playing this game and then constantly having to pause progress because they want you to dive into some of the side content because I know a lot of players out there, especially JRPG players, are not going to be big into some of the fetch quests and even though i think the side quests are mundane in terms of action the writing is really good so there are some i recommend that you do not skip but regardless i'm hoping that the level gating is not frequent beyond that though i think honkai has a ton of potential i think this is probably going to end up being another hit for mahoyo and listen, the game is really polished. I haven't run into any big issues at all. Any real known annoyances, I haven't seen it. Honestly, it's pretty freaking fantastic so far in terms of like player experience. But let me know what you think. Have you been playing uh, Honkai Star Rail? Tell me about your experience so far. Have you ran into that first level gate? Have you ran into that second level gate? Are you further than me? because that would be kind of really impressive. Are you paying for anything? How far have you gotten without paying that type of stuff? Let me know in the comments below. Are you excited just to try it out this weekend or are you gonna be playing Star Wars? Because let's be honest, Jedi Survivor comes out also. And the only, <laughs> the only advantage Honkai has is that it's free to play. But if you like the content, please consider like, sharing, and subscribing. I am Ken from Pixelated Thoughts and I will talk to you next time.